Before we get into today's video, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. And if we can get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we'll give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. The pin set, the art book. Oh boy, this actually matters because the art book is part of today's video. Now, what I want to warn you guys about going into this is this video does contain potential spoilers now it's a theory which is why we can have the title and the thumbnail the way it is but it is based around you know things that we've seen in the trailers but also things from the art book and you will see a a few imagery things from the art book here so i'm just warning about spoilers for those wishing to avoid them now first off i want to note that this deep dive analysis was actually performed by a guy named placebo yes that's his username with two eyes over on the Tears of the Kingdom Reddit. And I am going to put a link to his full thread because he added some additional comments that you guys can sort through in the comment section on there and maybe ask him some questions specific to this stuff. So basically the running theory right now when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom is that there is some form of time travel and Link himself travels between two time periods, a current time period and an ancient time period. And people believe that there's a lot of evidence to support this. Now, one thing to note is obviously the differences in the way that Link looks, right? We see him in his more traditional stuff. Then we see him in what looks like some sort of ancient Greek god-like attire, right? We've seen this in the trailers already. This isn't new information, but that doesn't really mean time travel because there's so many different costumes but what we do have in the art book is a look at a map uh, that doesn't match perfectly with Hyrule today and actually looks a bit older, a bit more ancient, as it were. So first off, we have this map comparison of Breath of the Wild Hyrule versus Ancient Hyrule, and you'll see all the various circles lining things up, except with water borders instead of a canyon border. But still, you're seeing this what looks like an older map of what Hyrule used to be like. Now, he does note in his analysis here, the ancient map is in the map room, and it shows generally shallower topography in every region. It's also somewhat stylized rather than a perfect representation like the Breath of the Wild map. Even so, there are many differences. 10,000 years may not have been enough time passage to explain these changes. So that's just obviously a running theory, and you're seeing that right here. But when we move on to the next analysis he does, this is where we get into some, some stuff here. Again, I warned you, there's spoilers. Uh, it talks about ancient people and their tech, and these people potentially being a time period we visit a long time ago. So there's like the Zonai armor set, possible confirmation that the gauntlet is Zonai tech. Again, we don't know for sure. Obviously, this is all theories and analysis. This isn't necessarily anything. Uh, mystery of the Raru race, aka the Zonai. So this character that you're seeing in the middle uh, has a name in the art book as Raru, and you guys will be able to make the connections all you want for that. Uh, but for this analysis, it goes into the mystery of Raru. It says Raru was a sage in Ocarina of Time, the old man with the mustache or the owl. Statues and carvings depict other members of this race besides Raru, and clearly part of the ancient time tells in the clothing and shared presence on the stone mural with the other ancient woman basket. Now, that's not the name of the actual woman. It's describing the basket she holds. Uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, it says right hand only has a bracelet with the jewel stuff. And we notice that if you look at the image in the middle, that's exactly sort of like what Link's arm looks like. So there is a connection there uh, of some sort. Now... The ancient era clothing and style includes cultural markings and triangle decorations, belts, straps, and necklaces share design languages. Big thing to notice, though, is the ear length. All of the ancient people seem to have much longer ear lengths. So that, that's what's going on here. Now, the mystery of the hand on Ganon's chest. Uh, only Link and Raru seem to be wearing the gauntlet. The hand on Ganon's chest has metal parts jutting out. Link's gauntlet does this, too. Raru's doesn't however uh the hand is much larger than a human hand conclusion the hand is a character we have not seen yet or else this raru art concept and it's missing some gauntlet details so it's either raru's hand or it's a character we just haven't seen yet 
All right, so moving on to the next batch of images here, we see architecture from the ancient past. So again, we're looking at this art stuff and everything just kind of looks like things from a long time ago. So we seem to have ancient Hylian stuff going on with lots of square shapes and writing patterns and then ancient Zonai as well. And you can see a lot of Aztec and animal themes in these designs, uh, many diagonal shapes, etc. Again, this looks like from a bygone era. All right, next up we have the time powers of the golden gauntlet again these are analysis not necessarily facts but freeze ganador for a thousand years uh you can see possibly reversing time on one of the trailers with the teardrop and link going up uh stopping reversing time on the spike ball reversing time on a fallen piece of land there's other time manipulation references as the images notes such as the appearance of sky islands with ancient tech all over them trailer music played in reverse logo spins counterclockwise Longhorn vocal blends from stone carvings appearing in post Breath of the Wild Hyrule, and uh, you know, a, a plateau or whatever shown intact in trailers. All right, next up, we have this sort of timeline. Now, this is a theory, of course, this is a, a, a really popular theory happening amongst Zelda fans right now on a, a possible timeline trying to connect everything together that's happened between Breath of the Wild. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom and in the past. So none of this is factual. I don't want to dive too deep into this timeline because there's a lot there. Again, go check out the Reddit thread if you want more speculation on this stuff. But it just basically goes into the ancient Zonai and Ganondorf and then part of Tears of the Kingdom happens. And then before it happens before the first calamity. Uh, and then Breath of the Wild happens in between. And then there's the part of Tears of the Kingdom that happens after that the, the Breath of the Wild events. So... Uh, it, that's the basic explanation. There's a lot of other fine details in there. If you want to dive further, again, go check out the Reddit thread. It's it's really interesting. So last part I wanted to feature, though, was the logo analysis. So this, again, is, is by this Reddit user, and it says there's two dragons, not one as traditional in the Ouroboros, because a lot of people have been doing the whole Ouroboros thing, the dragons eating each other, except that's only one dragon, usually not two. There's other symbolism for two dragons in a circle in other cultures as well, but this obviously is a non-traditional representation. Uh, and they don't appear when the logo's, uh, you know, appearing and, and, and doing its little thing during the trailers, uh, that they are actually eating each other. Uh, maybe they're working together, and they are circling counterclockwise and not clockwise, like in most depictions. Uh, the sword is in two forms as well, a corrupted metal and complete in art form. The art matches the ancient style, showing that the sword will be repaired with ancient tech possible in the ancient time. Maybe. We'll see. Or it just shows that in ancient times, the, the sword was actually complete, and now it's no longer complete. There lots of speculation there. Is there one link or two? The reason for two links, uh, post Breath of the Wild and Ancient, is there two Zeldas, two dragons in the logo. Dragons symbolize courage as personified by Link. Gameplay takes place over two full maps separated by a long time. It serves as a narrative reason for ancient Link to start with no gear or extra hearts. Or is there a time traveler Link? They look the same other than the clothes and hair. So the two different depictions of Link do look very, very similar other than hair and clothes. You know what I mean? Like that's a... Hey, if you look exactly the same, except for the style you're wearing, you're probably the same Link. Just one Ganondorf, healthy, and thousand-year-old mummy. Logo could mean same Link acting at two different times. Zelda's Heritage, Ocarina of Time, and Oracle of Ages both had the same Link time traveling. Wind Waker had a brief time travel segment as well. And obviously, you know, time travel's been a theme in Zelda many times. Ancient Link, quote-unquote, has short ears, whereas all of the ancient Hylians have long ears, which is something to point out because Link today has short ears, Hylians today have shorter ears, but ancient characters have long ears. So it, it may be just more proof that Link time traveled. So that's sort of where the time travel theories are right now based on the art book and stuff. Uh, there's some other time travel theories out there as well that go much deeper, uh, but maybe don't have as much supporting evidence. They just sound really cool. I just wanted to throw this out there and see what you guys thought about this. We don't do a lot of theories on this channel. I'm not even pretending that this is mine. Full credit, uh, full credit going out to Placebo over on the Tears of the Kingdom Reddit thread. Again, go check it out. Go talk to him. Go ask your questions and, and, and do your deeper analysis. I just want to hear your thoughts. If you think time travel is actually a mechanic in this game, again, it is something that Nintendo has used in Zelda's past. 
Now, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. This has been a great video. I got a news video coming later today. We got an update on F Zero coming to Nintendo Switch. That's really exciting. Uh, so we got we got that coming and a few other pieces of news out there for you. So you guys are awesome and amazing. Remember to smile, hug a loved one today, let them know that you love them because we don't always do that enough. And I'll catch you in that next video. Yeah.